a side event with the theme Broadening the Impact of Peace was organized on September 19, 2019 at the United Nations Office at Geneva to celebrate the 38th International Day of Peace. The event's main focus was religion, including emerging religions' hard work to contribute to global harmony and justice. The event was hosted by Fundación Vida Grupo Ecológico Verde and Foundation for the Improvement of Life, Culture and Society, and co-organized by the Center for Studies on New Religions, publisher of Bitter Winter, as well as over 10 other organizations and groups. The Church of Almighty God was invited to participate. Professor Massimo Intervene, an expert on new religions and editor-in-chief of Bitter Winter, spoke on the critical importance of emerging religions' contributions to the causes of peace and social progress. He pointed out that while not all members of new religions are saints, most are making genuine efforts to make the world a better place, and not just for other members of their group or organization. Professor Massimo Intervene also specially introduced the Church of Almighty God, which has suffered terrible persecution in China. He said that this church has always spread the message of peace and resisted evil forces as well as worked for global peace. Their films and song and dance videos have won a number of awards at international religious film festivals. The Church of Almighty God is a new Chinese Christian church. Since its founding in 1991, the church has been proclaiming Almighty God's kingdom gospel and testifying God's love and salvation for mankind. After hearing His voice, people from various denominations who love the truth returned before God's throne. However, as the kingdom gospel was spreading rapidly, the atheist CCP regime started to frantically suppress and persecute the church. At the event, CAG Christians spoke about the persecution the church suffers during the 28 years since the foundation of the Church of Almighty God, it has suffered a many arrests. Many Christians were tortured and more than 100 died as a result. What's more, about 600,000 were rendered homeless and are fleeing to escape the CCP's arrest. The persecution of the CAG garnered a reaction from attendees who were interviewed. Well, I've been informed about the persecution that the members of the Church of Almighty God are suffering in, uh, in China by, by people from the government and, uh, and established rules that there are. And I mean, what I have heard and what I have seen is horrendous and uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be allowed. Church of Almighty God, since more than one year, uh, we have been working with uh, many NGOs to raise the situation. And we did a statement, oral statement, write a statement. We did side event here to raise the situation of the Church of Almighty God. And uh, um, we have been here. Countries, uh, maybe they not, they not name Church of Almighty God, but now they are aware of the persecution of the Church of Almighty God in China. And China now know that some NGOs like us are ready to fight, to denounce what's happened for the member of the Church of Almighty God. The United Nations Security Council has recognized that the realization of human rights is essential for building and keeping peace. All people of the world hope for peace to come today, but the CCP clings obstinately to its course, trampling human rights and depriving its people of their freedom. Since it came to power, the CCP has never stopped suppressing Christianity, and in recent years, its oppression of all faiths has expanded. Human rights activists and dissidents are not spared either. China's atrocious human rights record has become a major concern across the entire world. Christine Lafort, representative of United for Human Rights, spoke at the event, saying that all parts of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights are a guarantee of achieving peace and all people should enjoy human rights. Some human rights observers have noted that even though it is a signatory, the CCP government has always been in violation of the declaration. When interviewed by an Eastern Light reporter, several attendees also condemned the CCP's despicable trampling of human rights. So I know, for example, in your country, in China, you have many problems with human rights, with your community, with the Catholic, and and with the Muslim. From the Uyghurs to, um, to, to your church, to uh, Muslims, to Tibetans. Uh, what I think is very important is that 
each gr each group that has experienced uh, persecution make sure to recognize the persecution of the others. The problem we have here at the United Nations with CCP and, and China is they, they don't want to hear anything on human rights violation. They deny any human rights violation in China. And this is a worse position they can have because they don't want to accept a discussion. They don't want to be in contact with a civil society or even other government that tries a situation of human rights violation. They just deny, deny, deny. But now it's obvious what's happened in China. It's, ob it's obvious uh, discrimination and human rights violation in China. So they, they become like nobody trusts them. I think uh, every totalitarian regime has tried to solve a problem that they thought it was a problem because they thought they were going to lose the control and they want to control. So if, if a, a person becomes a religious person, then he, he obeys to higher authorities than a government, you see? And so this is dangerous, quote unquote, you know, for, for any government, especially a government who doesn't want to uh, allow people to be free. During the CCP's autocratic rule of 70 years, at least 100 to 200 million Chinese people died of unnatural death. All Chinese people are living in white terror. It has also invested great efforts in training spies in order to infiltrate and disintegrate other countries. It crazily steals intellectual property, etc., from Western countries, has adopted the Belt and Road strategy, attempting to carry out its debt trap diplomacy. Where the CCP's hands reach, where there is turmoil, misfortune, and pain. Why is this world so dark and evil? This is a question that puzzles people greatly. But some are able to see through the myth and understand one clear fact. The main cause of the world's lack of peace and stability lies in the existence of the evil forces and the totalitarian regimes. The largest of these totalitarian systems and the one I and many brothers and sisters have direct experience of is a regime that centers around the Chinese Communist Party or the C CCP for short. A Christian from the Church of Almighty God called on all those who hate evil, who aspire to justice and peace, to rise up and jointly resist the CCP, as well as other totalitarian forces that strip away their people's religious freedom and other basic human rights. She also quoted words of Almighty God in her speech that reveal God's righteous, holy disposition. The words also declare that God will obliterate all dark, evil forces and bestow upon mankind true peace and a beautiful destination. <laughs> Reported by Eastern Light correspondent Xu Yang in Geneva.